I grew up as a shy and timid kid, yet every time I watched action movies, I was always drawn to the main characters. I wanted to be like them, a badass, a confident, fearless fighter capable of protecting myself and others. Somewhere deep down, I thought that if I won't be able to become like those heroes, I will never be able to live a fulfilling life. Yet little did I know what challenges were ahead of me. As I entered my teens, I started hanging out with the cool kids. We all wore saggy pants and tried to imitate the hip-hop culture in all ways possible. We were also a very peaceful bunch. Unfortunately, that is something that was known by the other major group of teens who we called the Forces. They were aggressive guys who were recognizable by their short hair and Adidas sweatpants. Knowing the peaceful nature of my group, they saw us as easy targets. And easy targets we were. Among many times that me and my friends were attacked, the first time was the most impactful. I was walking home with two of my friends late at night as two force guys approached us. For a while they were teasing us verbally, but they eventually declared that they're going to practice their latest fighting moves on one of my friends. They started kicking and punching him. My other friend who wasn't attacked was yelling for them to stop. Meanwhile, I stood frozen in fear. I had no idea what to do. After a few moments, the attackers eventually did stop and my friend who was attacked, thankfully, wasn't badly injured. Yet that experience left a deep emotional scar in me. All those action movies I watched and my desire to be a badass went down the drain at that moment. I realized that if I will continue to be afraid of being attacked, I won't be able to live with myself. I knew that never again would I want to be in that same situation and that something had to change. Yet I wasn't sure if me becoming fearless and confident was even possible. But I had to try and I started searching for solutions. I first began training on my own at home, imitating what I saw in movies and TV. Yet that did not get me far. Soon enough, I came to realize that I need a system and a person to teach me. Then a friend of mine invited me to try out a martial art called Aikido. As I started practicing this Japanese martial art, I quickly fell in love with it. I was told that it was an art of peace, a way to defend yourself and others without using violence. That greatly appealed to my peaceful nature and I devoted myself completely to this practice, hoping to find the answers to my fear and lack of confidence. Yet unfortunately, things did not work out as planned. Since I was living in a crime-ridden city, getting attacked was a common experience. I knew that sooner or later, I will get attacked. So I was constantly preparing, training Aikido as hard as I could. Eventually, an attack did happen. I was approached by five guys who demanded me to give them my cell phone. One of the guys grabbed me by my collar. At that time, I was practicing Aikido intensively for about a year. Being grabbed seemed to be an ideal situation. As in Aikido, you practice defending yourself against grabs all the time. Yet the only thing that came to my mind at that moment was to punch the guy in the head. I threw out my punch and as it was received, the guy collapsed on the ground. That sent the rest of the guys into chaos. They clearly didn't expect me to fight back. But I was not smart enough to use that chance to run away. I stood there waiting for them to attack me so I could try to defend myself using Aikido. That's when they pepper sprayed me. Luckily, I was then smart enough to run away and I was able to do it, even though my eyes and face were hurting like hell. But after that incident, my confidence shrank even more. When I asked my Aikido instructor to comment on what happened, he blamed me for not being able to use Aikido. He told me that I needed to train more, so I did. Yet with more training, my fear and doubt only continued to grow. Every following time when I was faced by a potential attacker, a huge feeling of fear and doubt took me over. That raised my doubts if I will ever be able to defend myself and others successfully by overcoming my fear and gaining confidence. A decade passed. During that time, I continued to train Aikido with devotion and commitment. I lived and trained at an Aikido school for three years. I became a professional Aikido instructor and opened up a full-time Aikido school. I thought that I grew out of my lack of confidence and fear due to my devotion to the practice. Yet then, something else happened. One evening, I was taking a walk together with a group of my students. As we were hanging out, a beefed up, shirtless guy approached us. At the beginning, it was hard to tell if he meant to hurt us. But that was enough for me to start feeling afraid. I did not discover any type of confidence in that situation and I was doing my best to avoid the conflict any way I could. I was full of doubt and fear, yet again not knowing what to do. My students noticed that. They saw the fear and lack of confidence in me. The guy ended up walking away without attacking us, but my students who I was with never looked at me the same way they did before ever again. They clearly lost all respect and confidence in me. And I can't blame them. I was their martial arts instructor. I was the guy who was teaching them to defend themselves. And I failed to stand my ground when it mattered. This event, till this day, is one of the most shameful moments of my life. In that situation, I did not turn out to be a badass I always wanted to be. 
I failed my students and failed myself. Even after years of devoted training in Aikido, I was still afraid of getting attacked. For a moment, I thought that maybe indeed I am hopeless. Maybe I am bound to be afraid for the rest of my life. But then I asked myself another question. What if it was not my personal fault, but a problem of the system I was training in? To be fair, I was giving so much energy and time to it, and I felt little internal change as a result. What if Aikido did not equip me to deal with these kinds of situations? I decided to take a leap of faith and to try something new. I closed down my Aikido school without knowing exactly what I will do next. At that time, I was attracted to a different practice known as mixed martial arts or MMA, but I had limited options to train it in the city I lived in. Yet as it sometimes happens in life, after a couple of weeks, I saw an answer. I discovered Wim to Warrior, a six months full-time MMA program that teaches you all the basics. It seemed like the perfect solution for me, but this program was not running in my country. Luckily, I knew someone who organized it at their gym. That someone was coach Matt Thornton. Matt Thornton is well known as a key figure in explaining the difference between functional martial arts and fantasy based martial arts. I had a feeling he had the answers that I was looking for and wrote him a message asking if I could participate in his organized Wim to Warrior camp. Soon enough, he replied to me that he would be happy to have me come over. I felt as if I was blessed by life. The problem though was that this was happening at the other side of the world from where I was but I had a deep cut feeling that I just had to do this. I decided to cut all my ties in my country and move to live in the States for the full-time MMA training. As I got to know coach Matt Thornton personally, he explained to me that my lack of confidence was not inherently my personal problem. He told me that it was actually a problem of the Aikido system that I was relying on and the way it is taught. As some other martial arts, Aikido relies on cooperative training where there's no actual fighting pressure or true sense of danger. These conditions are not enough to get used to and to prepare for a real attack. Yet hearing this was not enough. Another huge challenge was still ahead of me. As I started training MMA full time in the Wim to Warrior program, I also joined the MMA competition team. That was a scary experience on its own. I was about to face experienced fighters in constant sparring sessions, which included punches to the face, something that was not part of my Aikido experience. I felt intimidated. I felt out of my league. But I knew that if I won't step on the training mat now and face these guys, I will never overcome my fear. This was exactly what I needed to do. And despite my fears, I did. Intimidated and doubtful, I entered the competition team. Sparring with these people was an intense experience. Yet over time, I started to feel more and more confident. I stood my ground and did not give in to my fear. I kept walking out of my comfort zone daily and began to feel more and more comfortable being there. Yet the final question remained. What will happen when I will face a real potential attacker again? Will this training and experience be enough? The answer came to me soon enough. One day after an MMA competition team training, I was standing next to a bus stop waiting for my ride to take me home. I then noticed a guy a few meters away from me. He was anxiously walking around in circles. Something else also occurred to me. On top of him looking unsettled, attached to his leg, he was also carrying a huge ass machete knife. This was it. It was a moment of truth. In the past, I would have been scared out of my mind, having no idea what to do. Yet this time, something was different. I was not afraid at all. Instead, I focused on a metal camera tripod that I was holding in my hand. I thought to myself, well, if he will start going wild and attack me or anyone else, I'll hit him with a tripod. Back in my mind, I realized that each day I was facing people who knew how to fight. I was not only able to face them, I was also holding my ground and was learning to deal with them efficiently. Of course, I had to take the knife into consideration. I knew I had to be careful, but I was not afraid. I continued to stand in a relaxed but aware state as he eventually walked away. But that is not the end of the story. Fast forward two years. I was sitting outside in a cafe back home in Lithuania. A homeless person walked past me and cursed on a couple of ladies sitting across a few tables in front of me. He continued to walk further, but one of the ladies felt insulted and shot a curse back at him. He stopped in his tracks, turned back towards them, and was about to approach them again in an aggressive demeanor. I was observing the situation from my table, and seeing it, I immediately stood up and shouted at him, turn the f back. He stopped and hesitated, yet then he took another step towards the women. I shouted at him again, this time with an even more serious tone, turn the f back and walk away. There was no fear in me at all, just a healthy dose of adrenaline. I was fully ready to defend these women and to take this guy out if I had to. The homeless guy stopped again, thought for a moment, turned back and walked away, silently cursing to himself. I sat down back on my chair. 
The women across the table said thank you. I casually waved at them with a hi, nodded, and continued to enjoy my coffee. I felt like a total badass. If you're interested to learn why Aikido is disliked by BJJ and MMA practitioners, click on this video right here. This was Rokas, and I wish you to own your journey.